I'm back and I have red hair. But I read this book that my journalism teacher recommended, Goodbye Days. It's by Jeff Zentner. Zentner? I can't read cursive. I think it's Zentner. He's the author of The Serpent King. It's called Goodbye Days. And it is a really good book. So I thought I'd talk about it, kind of like how I talked about it, but I decided I would do it in a way that makes sense. And isn't just me sitting on my bathroom floor late at night talking about it. <laughs> it's about this kid and his name is Carver. Yes, his name is Carver. Yes, so his name is Carver Briggs, and he's got these three best friends. Mars, Eli, and Blake. So Carver, Mars, Eli, and Blake are the center of this story. Mostly Carver, because Mars, Eli, and Blake die in a car crash. And it opens with the third and final funeral. Yeah, so the premise of it is that the... That was kind of gross. The premise of it is that these four best friends are like... They're literally, they call themselves the Sauce Crew. And they met in their freshman year and they go to this like prestigious per performing arts school in Nashville, Tennessee. So it's like the country music capital of the world. I'm pretty sure it's of the world. Is country music, like not folk music, country music really popular anywhere other than the US? Please let me know. <laughs> Anyways, they, they all live in Nashville, Tennessee and they go to this performing arts school and they're the best friends ever. So like Carver, he wants to be a writer. He wants to be like an author. He writes poems and short stories and he's working on like a novel or something really cool like that. And then Blake is a, like, a, he's a funny guy. He's a comedian. He got into the school with his YouTube channel and he calls it performative art but it's really just prank videos um but it's still like an interesting concept and they were like oh this is so cool it is performative art you're being so brave or whatever and they invited him in um mars whose real name is thurgood marshall his dad is a judge um he's like the district judge or something i don't know how the court system works mars is he's like an artist like a visual artist he like draws and stuff eli makes music i thought eli was like a film person because i'm like they're all like they're like the four arts people <laughs> like each of them are in different things there's an, a writer there's a filmmaker there's a visual artist and then there was like a musician and eli has this girlfriend whose name is jasmine and she also makes music and they met at this music camp so that's the basis they're like this group mars eli and blake so his three best friends are in a car and they were all gonna meet up once carver got off of work right so carver texts them he's like hey where are you text me back and he sends it to mars because mars is the one that's most likely to respond but mars is also driving mars um text starts to text him back and they get hit by a semi on the highway um and all three of them die and the police find or the emts or whoever showed up first to the scene find the half written text to carver on mars's phone and you get told that in like little flashback scenes that i think are really cool but then the story picks up at okay so they, it's blake's funeral is where it starts and from the beginning, like Carver, it's in first person, which I usually hate, but I didn't hate with this book because I thought it was really well written. Um, Carver sets up the book very firmly. He's like, this is my life right now. And he sets up who's his ally and who isn't. So the people who are like, no, no way. You didn't kill your best friends. No freaking way, dog. Eli's girlfriend, Jasmine. And then obviously Carver's family, so his parents, whose names I can't remember, Mr. and Mrs. Carver, and then his sister Georgia are all like on his side. And then Nana Betsy, who is Blake's guardian and grandmother, she's on Carver's side. She's a super cool like character throughout this. 
Um, and then the people who hate Carver's guts and want him to die is Adair, who is Eli's twin sister. Eli's dad hates him. And then Mr. Thurgood, what's his name? Mr. 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 Ed Edwards, Judge Edwards, who's Mars's dad. Which is why I called him Mr. Thurgood, because that's Mars's real name. It's the summer before I think their junior year, but it could be their senior year. I can't remember. I know it's their senior year. So it's the summer before their senior year. They were all 17 and they were all going into this excited and, you know, happy. And then the three of them, Mars, Eli, Blake, die and Carver's left in the aftermath. And that's the whole concept for the book. <laughs> Judge Edwards suggests there might be foul play. He says he wants the DA, the district attorney, to open up an investigation into his son and his two best friends' deaths. So Judge Edwards is like, dude, you're going to jail. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Carver is like, bro, I didn't mean to this can't be true, this can't be happening. His parents are like freaking out. Georgia, his older sister, is also freaking out, but she's gotta go back to college soon. So she's like, dude, I can't be like here with you all the time. So then Carver has like a really bad panic attack and he passes out. So Georgia takes him to the ER. And then the doctor is like, you had a panic attack, you should get therapy. Like you should go to therapy, you should get help. And Carver's like, nah, 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 I don't need that. So then he goes back to school and um, he has another panic attack in front of everyone. So he's like, okay, fine. I'll go see George's old therapist. So he goes and he sees the therapist whose name is Dr. Mendez. Um, so he goes and he sees the therapist and this the scenes with Dr. Mendez are some of my favorite scenes. Because what he does is he makes Carver tell him a story. Because Carver's biggest problem is he's got like this like so much guilt about it. He thinks it's his fault. He is one of his enemies. Like, you know how I split up characters based on whether they were friend or foe? He's on the enemy side. He is his own enemy in this book. So Dr. Mendez makes him tell him a story where he makes up like a character who's the like villain of the story of the car crash rather than Carver making himself the villain of the car the story. He's just like forcing him to like realize that like it's not all his fault so i think that's really interesting i like the way the book handles grief a lot and so now i'm going to explain the title that i just figured out it's um called goodbye days because what nana betsy does as a way to like let go of blake who is her grandson by the way she she's like i want to have i never got to have a final day with him <sighs> that's so sad so then they have a goodbye day. They go fishing, they go to Waffle House, do all this stuff that Nana Betsy would have done with Blake. And they talk about him and they learn a lot about him. It showed like sort of the dichotomy of grief, I think, because Nana Betsy wants like so badly to have had this day with Blake and Carver can't help but think that it's his fault that she didn't get this day. And it's just like, it's just very interesting. So Goodbye Days, that's what it's called. It's like a series of Goodbye Days and it all leads up, like it all m mixes in with the plot. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. Crap, what was I talking about? The Goodbye Days? So, oh, I think I was talking about Eli and, er, um, Car mm. I think I was talking about Carver and Jasmine. So then like, they have one for Eli which is it, like Carver basically gets assaulted. He does get assaulted by like Eli's dad in the bathroom because they went to this hiking spot that Eli loved and they like spread some sand in the river. They were gonna spread the ashes, but Adair hates Carver's guts, so she didn't come. So they were like, I feel like it's super disrespectful to spread Eli's ashes without Adair here. And Carver was like, yeah, absolutely. So it's him, Jasmine, and then Eli's parents. And they go, and then like in the bathroom, Eli's dad like shoves him up against the stall door and he's like, he's like, you killed my son, blah, blah, blah. Um, but he's a grieving parent. 
I'm not condoning. See, that's the thing. Like, you do, you want to hate a lot of the characters, but you can't. Because they're grieving. And it's like, it just, like, it's just, I don't know. Like, it's hard. Like, I want to hate Eli's dad, but I can't because he lost his son. And, like, grief can make people do really mad things. And do I think that the statements might... No, actually, I don't think those statements have any validity at all. So anyways, I'm going to get to Mars's goodbye day because then I'm going to start talking about the things I liked and the things that I disliked with the book. And I'm already, I've already got lots of, lots of time. Footage is what that's called. So the closing investigation, they're like, look, we don't have any evidence against you. There's nothing incriminating. You didn't do anything wrong. Um, and then he has a goodbye day with Judge Frederick. He wants to make... Carver feel like he did when he learned his son was dead and then Carver went because it's all like in first person so we get to know everything Carver is thinking so here's a direct quote from the book now you understand how I felt when I received the call telling me my son had been killed his voice quakes talking about Judge Edwards but I already know my brain screams because I felt the same when I found out so he just puts him through this like super intense day and um, it's really very intense to read and it like makes me kind of sick <laughs> So he makes Carver go through Mars's bedroom and he says here's a donate pile for his clothes Here's a throwaway pile for his art and I'm like so You know like I was like whoa Wouldn't you want to keep that? Um, so so what happens is we see, like, because from this point, from up till this point, from both Mars and Judge Edwards, we had seen that they had a very tense relationship, but they still loved each other, you know, but we haven't seen a lot of proof of that. But then Carver finds, I keep wanting to say Eli, or Carter instead of Carver. By the way, his name is Carver with a V, not Carter with a T. So that's fun. Um, he finds this comic book that Mars had been in the process of making called like the judge or something and it was basically this judge was like a superhero and it was based on his dad and it was recent and like it wasn't something that this little kid drew it was something that this teenager drew because he thought his dad was a hero and you know Judge Edwards didn't know any of that and so Carver walks downstairs and Judge Edwards is like, are you done? Carver is like, no, you're going to read this and you're going to like it. And you're going to let me tell you about the son that I knew. You're finally going to get to know him for real. And then Judge Edwards is like, that's not the deal, son. And he throws him out of the house. <sighs> and then they learn that the investigation has been called off, I think, after that. And then Judge Edwards comes over to Eli's house. Or not Eli. <clears throat> Carver comes to Carver's house and he is like, I read the thing, tell me about Mars. And that's the first time he used Mars instead of Thurgood talking about him. So it's like, I don't know. I just think it's like a really beautiful book. I don't know how things work. I'm not an author. I'm just someone who likes to read and I know what I like. And what I liked is really flushed out characters. I really liked um the way it was written i think this is the favorite book i have read that was in first person because again i don't usually like first person books i'm not a huge i'm not the biggest fan of like a first person novel but i really liked this one like this one and simon versus the homo sapiens agenda is probably the those two are probably like my favorite books that i've read in first person also, I'm not the biggest, like, teen fiction person anymore, um, like, realistic teen fiction. I'm a huge fan of, like, fantasy or dystopian things, like The Hunger Games or, like... Oh, I can't read any of the... I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read any of those titles, but, um, I'm, like, I used to be a way bigger fan of realistic fiction than I am now, but... Again, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and Goodbye Days are probably my two favorite realistic fiction books. <sighs> it's 
still record? I have 35 minutes. Oh god. Okay, so this is from the very first chapter of the book. <coughs> and it's like probably my favorite, one of my favorite quotes. It's this big paragraph and it's, it says, I'm numb, blank, not yet in the throes of the blazing, ringing pain I'm certain waits for me in the unrolling days ahead. It's like once when I was chopping onions to help my mom in the kitchen, the knife slipped and I sliced open my hand. There was this pause in my brain as if my body needed to figure out that it had been cut. I knew two things right then. One, I felt only a quick strike and a dull throbbing, but the pain was coming. Oh, it was coming. And two, I knew that in a second or two, I was about to start raining blood all over my mom's favorite bamboo cutting board. Yes, people can form deep emotional attachments to cutting board. No, I don't get it, so don't ask. So I sit at Blake Lloyd's funeral and wait for the pain. I wait to start bleeding all over everything. Oh, and then this one from chapter 43, which is near the end of the book, <laughs> obviously. Um, I go into my parents' room to hug them goodnight. They must sense something in me. They hold me between them where they lie, warm and sleepy, and I cry like a child in their dark room. The tears are heavy, weighted with what they're carrying from me. When I finish, I'm quiet inside for the first time in months. Not happy, not free, like floodwaters that haven't receded but are finally tranquil. All that was lost and broken, drifting just below the surface under a cloudless sky. <sighs> so anyways, that's it. <laughs> that's the whole 45 minutes that I'm going to spend talking about Goodbye Days, written by Jeff Zentner. I think I said it right that time. Zentner. Sentner. The boys have fallen asleep listening to me talk, as they often do. <laughs> um, so, that's it. That was a really good book. I think you guys should read it. And I think you guys should subscribe. <laughs> Ugh.